I've never been so excited in all my life. It's really wonderful, isn't it? Quite an experience to live in fear, isn't it? That's what it is to be a slave. I can't believe it. This can't be. All I perceive is the relish and debris of a store that used to be. The store was my life and the way I survived. The feeling I feel is hard to describe. A better tomorrow was my main goal. Now all I have is a future left untold. I came to this country with my clothes and my shoes. No family, no friends, so I had nothing to lose. Now all I have is a dream of what used to be. And now I'm standing here filled with melancholy. I'm going to leave here feeling lonely and blue, in the back of my mind wondering, what did I do? One one thousand, two one thousands, three one thousands, four one thousands, five one thousands. One one thousands, two one thousands, three one thousands, 
four one thousands, five one thousands, one one thousands, two one thousands, three one thousands, four one thousands, five one thousands, one one thousands, two one thousands, three one thousands, four one thousands, five one thousands, one one thousands, two one thousands, three one thousands, four one thousands. Five one thousands, one one thousands, two one thousands, three one thousands, four one thousands, five one thousands. Fifty six times in eighty one seconds. Fifty six times in eighty one seconds. Television. Fifty six times in eighty one seconds. Multiply that. Fifty six times in eighty one seconds. On television. Fifty six times. In eighty one seconds. In eighty six times. One in eighty one seconds. What do you feel about the recent sort of seconds. mediaization of police brutality and black men? In eighty one seconds. One videotape. Fifty six times. Multiply that. In eighty one seconds. The number of times. One videotape. You saw it. One Fifty six times. In eighty one seconds. Fifty six times. In 81 seconds. The whole intimidation factor of police behavior is a history of my lifestyle. So suddenly seeing it in a sensationalist version vis-a-vis -vis L.A. and vis-a-vis -vis the media, for me it's okay, yeah, we all know this and now you can see it in a really hard line view, but that doesn't change reality at all. I mean, these little pockets of, you know, fascist white supremacist bullshit go on, you know, and they're going to continue to go on in this kind of what we call majority culture. So what do you mean, what do I think? Whenever these uh, outside forces come in, the death rate among young black males go up. And, uh, and I, I, I'm concerned about that. That point of contention is unclear on the videotape. King then crumpled to the ground, Pal said, like a rag doll. The videotape goes out of focus. Pal testified that when he turned toward King, he saw King trying to get back up. Powell can be seen delivering a flurry of baton blows. Testimony indicated that King was on all fours, attempting to stand up. Powell said he was frantically trying to keep King down. When the video comes back into focus, five other officers can be seen in a semicircle around King. He's seen lying face down on the ground, but with his head up. One expert on the use of force testified that every blow past this point was excessive. If, if we are being defined right now by how much we are oppressed and that is wrong, I'm going to assume that that's wrong. We need to define our success by being able to change that reality right now. Um, a teacher once said to me that power is the ability to divine reality and to have others heed to that definition. I don't really watch too much TV because, you know, they downgrade blacks a lot. And there's little things we don't catch, but, you know. They're subtle. Yeah, very, very subtle. And, they're, and they do it in a roundabout way. Like, I'll give you an example, like Tarzan. He was a white man in the jungle, and he could beat a lion with his bare hands. And symbolically, to me, it's saying, well, the white man can defeat nature. And so it's reinforcing. Nature. Right. But see, we don't see that. See, like the black kids, they might see Tarzan and they think, oh, Tarzan, you know, hey, Tarzan. You know, but then they see a white man defeating the blacks in a sense, you know, but they don't, it's subconscious. And so you're gonna feel inferior to a white man. Because if you, if you see a white man beating up a lion on TV and, you know, ruling over blacks in their own territory, mm -hmm. then it's, and it's, you're gonna think that, well, I'm not, you know, you're gonna think you're inferior. The uh, policemen just were not uh, guilty of any abuse uh, in our mind. They did simply what they were trained for using the tools that are given to them and uh, based on uh, Rodney King's actions. Five one thousands. He's the one that was Fifty six times and all the in way 81 through. seconds. I feel that the police did only what they, they had seconds. to do in order to get him under control. For most people, the video is all they needed to know about the Rodney King case, seconds. a beating beyond comprehension captured on tape for all to see. 
It was just another piece of evidence that we had to look at. It's the parts that are, are shown repeatedly uh, on the television are uh, the parts that appear to be most violent. They uh, show a limited amount There's of a footage behind his head. You know, they, and if there are two or more blacks in the car, they will pull you over. I've been pulled over until that time. numerous amount of times. To, uh, you know, me and my Make friends, because just coming off playing basketball. Get away to you know, they live in the area, and I'll be dropping them off at home and get pulled over for nothing. Literally nothing. They just, you know, just checking us out, asking me where I'm from, where I'm going, and this and that. And, you know, it's just, it's hard. Two one thousands, three one thousands, four one thousands, five one thousands, one one thousands, two one thousands, three one thousands, four one thousands, five one thousands, one one thousands, two one thousands. Three one thousands, four one thousands, five one thousands, one one thousands, two one thousands, three one thousands, four one thousands, five one thousands, one one thousands, two one thousands, three one thousands, four one thousands, five one thousands, one one thousands, two one thousands. Police in Alameda seem like it's the same white cop that keeps pulling me over. Same cop. Mm -hmm. No reason. When you go to Alameda? Just in Alameda. Really? It seems like it's the same cop. He didn't pull me over at least three times before, but I got put over about seven or eight times in Alameda, and, and three or four times have been the same cop. Really? And he keeps saying he just pulled me over because they, they, they look for somebody that fits my description. Oh, really? And, and so what has he told you that description is? <laughs> he never told me. He just oh, really? says he never you know, says like it's a black man. No, your he just says somebody you know fit my description. And there's no police presence down here. They will not enter the area. That's right. This is attempted murder. They're picking his pockets now. I, okay. I think we just took a round. I think we just took. Do you see that? He's, he's reaching up for help, and somebody kicked him in the head. Oh, look at that. Terrible. And there's no police presence down here. They will not enter the area. That's right. This is attempted murder. said that King, who'd been shot twice with a stunning electric taser gun, was lying flat on the ground. When, according to Powell, King suddenly rose to his feet and charged Officer Powell. Powell said he had no time to react. 
pension. I said a black male experience to find a way to, to sort of rise up. 34 people, into the, into the 28 of them black, died. And in a sense where, blocks were destroyed. Me it's like, you know, a black man goes through a lot, and he experiences, like, with the police, like, I know you've seen, like, him, you know, the things on L.A. and stuff like that, about the L.A. cops and stuff, but people just don't know that goes on all the time. And for me, I mean, personally, it's happened to me a lot, you know, because I grew up in Hunters Point, and that's where, you know, it was like a lot of, kind of, you know, a lot of police brutality, a lot of it. But we don't know it because it's in our own city and nobody ever filmed it. One, one thousand. Two one thousands, three one thousands, four one thousands, five one thousands, one one thousands, two one thousands, three one thousands, four one thousands, five one thousands. He continues to be racked by violence, the result of Wednesday's acquittal of four Los Angeles police officers who had been accused of beating Rodney King. When it was over, the prosecution had failed to convince the jury that 81 seconds of videotape spoke for itself. I mean, it's, for me, you know, I have to be realistic. I have to look at myself, African-American, two, male, and three, you know, conscious. The uh, policemen just were not uh, guilty of any abuse uh, in our mind. Khalid, Farrakhan, you ain't got that much time. OK, okay I'll put it like this. White folks are afraid of genetic annihilation. They don't want to die out as a race. Therefore, they oppress black people so we cannot reproduce. Because if we reproduce with them, we get black kids. If we reproduce alone, we get black kids. If you have teen mothers having three or four or five kids, there's three or four or five black motherfuckers running around that they got to put in jail. As a matter of fact, you didn't know that California got eight new jails and the majority of the people in them are young black males between 18 and 30. That's always on the ballot. They want us to vote for new New jail. Yeah, so I'm saying is <laughs> they're trying to kill us off. One way, drugs. Another way, prison. Another way, joining the army because we got 400,000 fighting in Saudi Arabia and 70% of them are black. So what can I say? All right. I don't know that I could summarize it in a matter of few abstract statements, oh, this is what the black male experience is. Should I start with my penis, or should I start with my <laughs> hair, or should I start with my, you know, my history, should I start with my religion, you know, should I start with what? I mean, what should I start with to define this experience? Mm -hmm. I couldn't answer that question like one, two, three. see my own brothers and sisters loot and burn the property of innocent beings, I could only lower my head and cry tear to ask our God to forgive us for our doings. And as I saw the beating of one innocent man, I would pray to God and ask for forgiveness. For we only blame someone else for the fault that we have no progress. We should not pick out an individual and blame him for the outrage in our community, for we were brought to the society 
to live together as one with love and prosperity. At night on the streets of Los Angeles, and it is not too cool. I wait for the fire to die. Turned on my TV to destruction. They did not speak with their tongues nor their mouths, just burned and looted. I watched places burn with my eyes. And then I sat in my shadowy bedroom, looking down on careless men while the long moon drifts towards heaven. People muttered out loud on the smoking hot streets. And when morning came, people took others out of their cars. King was innocent. It may be another riot. After the acquittal of the four LAPD officers in the King beating, Los Angeles County revealed to the world that it was no longer the Tinseltown we were all in love with. Our cities were neglected, depressed economically, and angry. The first night of the uprisings hit home on April 29, 1992. My father had to contend with the angered mobs of South Central LA. My father is a Native American, 18-year veteran of the LA County Deputy Sheriff's. He's currently working in Watts and South Central LA. I was scared that my father wouldn't come home alive of the night of the uprisings. I've created this video to show my father's views and job experiences before, during, and after these events. I've been working down here since, uh, well, since the Blue Line opened in 1990. I've been on the department almost 18 years now. Citizens can't even walk these streets without being gunned down by drive-bys from the gangsters. Every block in this part of the city is gang turf. You cross their turf, they'll kill you for it. They figure you're uh, some other gang. You're on their turf selling, selling drugs, or you know, trying to push into their area. It's. Uh, reason enough to get killed in this area. It's always been a problem between law enforcement and the gangbangers, but uh, now they're just, they seem to be getting organized. So it remains to be seen how long that their truce is going to last. There's been gang meetings every week in this area, one housing project or another. Oh, the only thing that's been generated out of the gang meetings is they've attempted to uh, have organized attempts on the uh, police officers' lives. That's the only result that's happened so far. They haven't done anything beneficial for their society or their neighborhood that they live in. It's so all the attention that uh, the media has given the gangs. What good has it done? As far as I can see, it's done nothing but cause more problems. The housing track name is a Pueblo del Rio, and the local gang here that evolved from this, this setting here is called the Pueblo Bishops. And they're the uh, primarily a blood gang. Oh, big time meeting. Oh, no. This is one of the meetings they've been having in the, uh, in the uh, projects uniting the Crips and the Bloods. And they carry their wars from generation to generation. It's part of the culture here almost. Right on this street here, there's been four or five attempts on police officers' lives in the past year that I know of, either on sheriff's deputies or LAPD. 
believe there was two LAPD officers that were hit by bullets in this, in this parking lot right here. So, you know, all the politicians, they want to talk, you know, harmony between the uh, police and the local gang members. It's not going to happen. It takes a long time to get over a, uh, you know, feeling of war. It was a combination of all of it. Racial tensions, you know, the crime problem, the gangs, and just a general neglect of the cities. I feel it was like a betrayal of the public trust. We get paid for putting our lives on the line, and it was a very hazardous situation, but uh, we had a number of officers that could have responded immediately. It was kind of a matter of stepping on toes. Chief Gates would not request our help. No one put out a call for our help. And evidently, for the first few hours, as far as we could tell, there was no plan. Now, we could have sent it. We could have mobilized a couple hundred officers just by a radio call. If there would have been a request from the city and a plan, Matter of fact, this reminded me of Saigon. <laughs> Saigon was under attack. Basically, you've got the same conditions. You got a disillusioned population with virtually no hope, you know, of uh, changing their situation. So, you know, there's uh, there's a similarity there. But because of the political bickering between the mayor and the police chief. The city suffered the consequences of poor leadership and the city burned. Here's an example across the street over here. There's the people in this area that could least afford, you know, the uh, destruction. Partner and I, we ran across a group of stranded mariachi uh, singers. They had their instruments and their costumes on, and we stopped to see if they were all right. And they said, "Okay." They wanted to know where there was a bus or a train running so they could get home. And of course, there was nothing running during the riots, so they disappeared into the night. We had to go on and you know, contend with some of the crimes that were going on as the city was burning. And I always wonder what happened to the mariachis on the night of the L.A. riots. <laughs> well, I guess it's like an old warrior that's trying to maintain a little law and order in this area. It's a losing battle, but uh, somebody has to do it. Fighting losing battles ever since Vietnam, so why change now? Oh, the odds are if you stay out here long enough, you'll be shot at, you know, which since the riots have been shot at five times in the past two months. And of the five, one suspect was killed. But uh, you lose your head out here and you lose your life. There seems to be a lot more guns on the street right now than there ever has been in the past. The citizens in the area get more anxious about their safety. They carry more guns. And the police officers, they have to deal, deal with that. This is probably just uh, an example of the worst neglect, you know, on the west coast of general neglect of the cities. It's been going on for 25 or 30 years. Any person that's ever been in any of the American cities knows that they're, you know, compared to, say, Japanese cities or European cities, you know, our, the cities in the United States are in terrible condition. 
supposedly this is supposed to be the richest nation in the world, or was at one time. Whatever happened to our cities. It was this graceful thing my neighbors steal. The whole event seemed so unreal. My image of them began to fade away. I could no longer see the children praying. Throughout the day, all I could see was a society wanting to be set free, free of prejudice, free of injustice. What was wrong, I couldn't decide, but I figured no one was on no one's side. We live in a country where we must stand, stand up for our rights. If we don't, we might be living in a dying land, full of nothing, empty, vague, confusing, isolated, chained. But let's make a difference and leave nothing in vain. Wednesday, April 29th, 1992. During school, I was so excited about how the Rodney King trial would end up. Unfortunately, the jury concluded that the four policemen who used unnecessary force on the Martin King were innocent. I agree with black po protesters that the verdict was based on the racism from the beginning. It took place in Simi Valley, where it has a white majority. In south, in south central of Los Angeles, many were so angry and they started burning the stores, breaking windows, and looting. Police had lost totally control of the L.A. It was the saddest day in my life. What made, what made me sad was there is still racism going on even in the trials and why the Koreans have to be almost middle of the both white and black society. Also, I just got a, the phone call from my friend who had a store in Southgate. He told me it was burned down. I didn't know what to say to him. I just felt sorry for him. Thursday, April 30th, 1992. I just woke up in a, such a peaceful morning. I forgot all the damn things that happened yesterday, and I was ready to go to school. But my mom told me not to go to school because of the news that protesters would get to the Beverly Boulevard by today. Somehow, I went to school. During fourth period, my classmates' parents came and picked them up. I knew there must be something going on right now. After school, I saw a whole mess on my way home. I couldn't find the word to explain it. I just kept on saying, oh my God. I got a phone call right after I got home. My friends said that their store, their store is in danger. They asked me for help. I certainly said I would. I didn't think that it was dangerous, scary. But as soon as I got there, I wanted to go home. Almost thousands, thousands of people around the store and smoke coming out of next door. They were the leaders who commanded others to loot the store. They rushed the store frequently and we stopped them with the toy machine guns. We put some paintings on the toy machine gun so everybody would think it was real. Of course, later we had a real guns. I slept there. It continued even the middle of the night, throwing firebombs on the roof. Well, it was such a tough day. I didn't understand what the police were doing while we were still struggling. I remember at school, I just, had a, I just made a speech that teenagers should not listen to such abusive songs like Fuck the Police, but I just changed my mind. 
On May 1st, the third day of the riot, it spread all around L.A., even outside of California. The National Guard started to come into L.A. to control the riot, and it seemed that the riot started to die out. People thought that, that it would get worse. Even the classes were canceled. But with the help of National Guards, it started to smooth over. On that day, I just came back home from my relative's house. My mother was so scared the other day because there were fire at, at our neighborhood on 3rd and Alexandria. So we went to our relative's house and stayed over one night and came back. When I came back, I saw burned out stores still smoking a little. I felt emptiness in the street and somewhere in my heart as I look at the city at the roof. That's how the day passed. Next morning, Saturday, May 2nd, 92. I woke up and came out to the street to see, the, see how it is. Then I saw the line of Koreans calling for peace and justice. There were lots of Koreans on the third street. I never knew there were so many Koreans in LA. Anyway, I joined in the line and became one of them. Even though I, I am Korean, I didn't like Korean because of its politics. But in this line, I felt proud to be one. Not that I was ashamed, but that I was never more proud. Korean were the victims of the riot, but they stood up with the others to protest the injustice done to Rodney King. I felt good. Especially when I saw that people from other races had joined in. When it was finished, I came back home and fell asleep. I was tired. What really caused people to go crazy like that, we don't know. But it was one of the worst events in the history of LA. It destroyed our streets and our dreams. Most adults could figure out what was going on, but through the eyes of a child, it wasn't so easy. All of us saw four white police officers and one black man. Many adults could see more, but that's all the children saw, black and white. Although some of these children live different lifestyles, April 29th through 31st, all of them witnessed history in the making. Los Angeles exploded in frustration, anger, and rage after a jury in Simi Valley found four officers accused of beating Rodney King not guilty. People took to the streets, looting, fighting, protesting, and setting fires. But the ones who were affected the most were the children. Some were worried, but others were not. Um, people, I, um, I just, I just want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? Can we, can we get along? Um, can we stop making it, making it horrible for, for the, for the older people and the, and the, and the, and the kids? My name is Francine Battle and I'm a third grade teacher. And I've been teaching for 25 years and I'm a mentor teacher, which is a teacher of teachers. I gave all the children an opportunity to voice how they felt, what they were feeling now, uh, how they felt about the riots, the reasons for and we listened and then um, as an educator and as a model i told them many times in life they will have choices and uh, of course uh, i certainly am not here i told them to judge or condemn and i can certainly understand just like a volcano and i gave them the analogy of the volcano i said the rodney king Verdict was like the straw that broke the camel's back. It was like the last bit of pressure needed for the volcano to explode. My name is Tashana Sim. I'm in grade three. I feel that it wasn't fair that they burned down all their stories and now people that don't have a car to get around had to go far to go shopping. I was afraid that they was going to burn part of our buildings and it would reach my house. It made me angry. It made me angry because 
because I was burning down our, our stores and I, I was worried about my grandmother, my auntie, and other relatives in my family. And I felt that it wasn't fair. And if they wanted to burn down houses, they should have burned down houses where the police knew. I'm still gross. I'm in grade three. I felt that it wasn't no fair with the just the right and key. And if they wanted to burn and loot, why they couldn't go to Simi Valley? and tear up all that stuff and, and um why you had to burn the stores over here and stuff and people people can't get all the stuff that they used to get because they because they don't burn it down and loot it and i think it's not fair i think it's not fair people felt that uh just as the jury had to ask the judge what a beating was, they couldn't look at the tape and determine whether or not Rodney King was being beaten. Um, it's interesting that the white man that was pulled from the chuck, there was no question that he received a beating. That was a beating, but they weren't sure that Rodney's was a beating. They had to get a definition. And I told the children, I said, in your life, you're going to have opportunities to make decisions. And many of the people that were making decisions on Wednesday night and Thursday were making decisions out of anger and hurt and pain. And many times when you have to make a decision under those circumstances, they are not the best. And I trust that when you get older that you will try to make good decisions. Hello, my name is Willie Jackson. I am in the third grade. Um, I don't like the way they had be rotten kids. My mother said if it was for a black person and it had be one white person, they would have found them four black men um, guilty and they would have put them in jail. That's it. Unless you're awfully, awfully ignorant, it would, it would have, or that you had been stuck in a cave for the past uh, 30 years. You would have to, all these things would have to be true for you not to, to have seen some of this coming. Uh, I think of Moynihan's phrase in this, after the 60s when Nixon got in, it was time for benign neglect. And I think what has resulted in our cities being in the condition they're in and our, in our urban areas being in the condition they're in, is that benign neglect that's gone on now for the past 20 years. Uh, you can't neglect a people and a city and expect it to uh, come out unscathed. You can't neglect, neglect inner city youth and uh, the schools and the inner cities and expect it to go uh, just un unchecked. You can't let it go unchecked and expect it to just lie dormant and like nothing is going to happen. It's, 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 uh, to me, if you, if you think this, uh, then, then you're living in a fool's paradise. We need more role models like Ms. Battle to help determine our children's future because when social unrest happens, who is there to help our children understand what and why it occurs? The children of today are the leaders of tomorrow. It's time for you and me to stand up for ourselves. It is time for you and me to see for ourselves. It is time for you and me to hear for ourselves. And it is time for you and me to fight for ourselves. We don't need anybody today speaking for us, seeing for us, or fighting for us. We'll fight our own battles. Out of the huts of history, shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean. Leaping and and why? Well, well, I did.
I've never been so excited in all my life. It's really wonderful, isn't it?